this conference will now be recorded. That uh, was uh, collected by Ivan Walton back in uh, the early 30s and from a couple of fellows who actually worked when they were young aboard the uh, uh, Moonlight. And this uh, next song I'd like to sing for you is a song that uh, is a ghost story from St. Martin Island. Um, and uh, St. Martin Island is located at the entrance, as you can see there, at, at the entrance of Green Bay on the Michigan side. Um, and um, this particular story comes from um, a uh, book called Haunted Lakes by historian Frederick uh, Stonehouse. As seen in the old days, the lighthouse was situated at, at the main entrance to Green Bay, but it was too far away from any real civilization. Yes, there was a fish camp there early, but too far away from civilization. But because of its proximity to the entrance, the lighthouse uh, was uh, there. And for uh, the family that ran the lighthouse, it was a very, very lonely place. However, the kids were allowed to go across uh, the entrance to the bay there to Washington Island and attend school there. They would sail across and then at the end of the day they would they would sail back home. And one day the signal was given that the kids were on their way back home to the lighthouse keeper. But they never made it home. The lighthouse keeper was beside himself as the story goes. He searched all along the shoreline for what might have happened to his children even after dark with his lantern. Now, many years later, as a, a vessel was trying to make it into the harbor, into the, the bay, she went on the rocks. And this is the story that, that ensued. St. Martin Island. St. Martin Island lays to the entrance of Green Bay. Just a solitary citadel of stone. The mariners depended on her beacon burning bright across these restless waters all along. The shroud of a sad story surrounds this sullen space and it's heard throughout the region far and near. There's a history of haunting imprinted every place of the old lighthouse keeper who lived here. When the night is a jagged black and the waves are on the rise from a north wind that, that screams down from an arctic hell the glow of the keeper's lantern can be seen along the shore of saint martin island ever searching This island isolation was really quite ideal for the raising of a family, some say. But the children's education proved a difficult ordeal when the nearest school was 10 miles across the bay. When the weather permitted, those kids would sail to school take their lessons for the day and then return. One day a squall came up and they were lost without a trace. And ever since that tortured keeper's lantern burned. When the night is a jagged black and the waves are on the rise, from a north wind that screams down, from an arctic hell, the glow of the keeper's lantern can be seen along the shore of St. Martin Island, ever searching. It was 
many years later in a monstrous midnight gale, the lamp up in the lantern room went dark. And caught in the tempest while the running from the bay, the schooner Juno's helmsman, Mistress Lark. She went up on the rocks, she was pounded by the seas, and that struggle in the surging crest and draw. And confusion held its way amid wind and rocks and spray, and the last few surviving crewmen went along. While clinging to the cross trees throughout this blackest night, the sailors will follow, and bearings completely lost, pray to the Lord our Father to deliver them his grace. Each one bowed his head, and the hearts they crossed. Off in the distance, that helmsman saw a light, just a bobbing saw green lantern of the world. So each one descended from their refuge on the wreck and plunged through the breakers to the shore. They helped each other crawl through the clutching, crashing surf and heaved upon the beach to take their bed. But that little lantern light went a drifting up the path towards the lighthouse tower on the crest. When they reached the keeper's quarters and walked through the entrance door, the had been blown open in the storm. They found the keeper in his bed and he had long been dead. But the lantern at his side was very warm. When the night is a jagged black and the waves are on the rise from a north wind that screams down from an arctic hole the glow of the keeper's lantern can be seen along the shore of St. Martin Island ever searching. Yes, the glow of the keeper's lantern can be seen along the shore of St. Martin Island ever searching. St. Martin Island. So um, these songs, well, that one is a song that I wrote, uh, requested, uh, the, the, somebody requested the story and I did the research and, and uh, it went from there and the song came out. Ah, uh, there's Ivan Walton, and uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. Do you have a question, Michelle? I, I don't. I was just going to thank you and apologize that I uh, forgot to hit the record button on time. Oh. <laughs> well, it, it does make it very interesting when you're singing and reading at the same time. So <laughs> <laughs> most of the time, what's interesting, most of the time I'm singing with my eyes closed, but you know. <laughs> It doesn't make that much difference. But. And, and I will tell everyone who's joined us today, it was really interesting doing the research to put together a few of these little graphics to supplement your songs. Well, there's a lot of information out there, that's for sure. And, uh, and there just seems to be more and more uh, due to all the historians and the enthusiasts that are uh, just really enjoying the, our Great Lakes heritage. And uh, I have a, an advantage over everyone else because I've already seen the playlist. And uh, oh. this next one that you're planning to do, it's a lot of fun, I think. 
Yes, it is. Uh, it's a uh, another traditional song, and it originally was from the East Coast, and uh, it it comes out it comes out of that book that's on on the screen there, Songs of the Great Lakes Sailors by Ivan Walton, uh, Windjammers, um, and uh, a tra traditionally tradesmen like to you know, sometimes they'll write poems or songs about the different types of work that they do or the tools they use or that type of thing. And over the years in the in the tall ship era on the East Coast and probably even on the West Coast too, world, worldwide, um, the song came up called the Sailor's Alphabet, kind of this, taking that uh, letter and then describing something that, that they use in everyday life uh, in their work. And the traditional song, or the original song was what you would find aboard a schooner uh, or a sailing ship, a uh, tall masted sailing ship uh, uh, in the world. But this particular version is what you would find on a Great Lakes freighter. And so there's a few different uh, uh, terms that you wouldn't find on a, uh, uh, on a uh, tall ship. So it's a sailor's alphabet and it goes like this. for anchor, sometimes called the hook. B is for bosun, who's often the crook. C is for captain, a rusty old man. And D is for dead where the witches are land. E is for ensign, high up on the spar. F is for fireman, who throws the slice bar. G is for galley, where the cook does his stuff. And H is for hatchway, where one falls enough. So merry, so merry, so merry are we. No mortals on earth are as happy as we. Sing high, every old, every high, every dumb. You say the boys blow, and there's nothing goes wrong. High is for high, or that the ship's carry. J is for Jane, we all love our old Mary. K is for Q, deep down in the sea. L is for Roxette, Sault Ste. Marie. And this for Matt is all full of bed bugs. And this for many means we eat from our mugs. O is for Euler, all greasy and gray. And P is for bugs, which he does night and day. So merry, so merry, so happy are we. No mortals on the car is happy as we. Sing I and we know there'll be I there we done. You say the boy's gone, there's nothing goes wrong. You is for quarter then call the fan tail. Hours for rowers that come over the rail. S is for sailor who does his own patches. G is for tarpaulin that covers the hatches. U is for union the pipe hitters know. B for ventilator down which the winds blow. W for windlass that pulls up the hook. And X the signature of our scholarly cook. So merry, so merry, so merry are we. No mortals on that are as happy as we sing Idery or Billy Idery Don. You say the boys love and there's nothing to go wrong. Why is for yell the mate of the mate? C is for zero in winter on the lakes. That's all of the words that I know to this song. You find more letters, then you can write on. So merry, so merry, so merry are we. No mortals on the are as happy as we. Sing a merry or dare we, I dare we not. You say the boys brought and there's nothing goes wrong. So merry, so merry, so merry are we. No mortals on the are as happy as we. Sing a merry or dare we, I dare we not. Say the boys Sailor's Alphabet. Now that was actually collected by Ivan Walton uh, from a guy named William Head of Picton, Ontario, back in, uh, as I say, 32, 33. But he heard it just a few years before on um, the uh, Selkirk 
in Lake Ontario, so not too far off from where he was. So um, that's uh, a wonderful uh, illustration of their uh, type of, uh, what do I want to say, the songs that they would put together. Um, now this next one is a song that um, was, again, collected by Walton. I thought I'd do a lot of the traditional songs here, but it, it talks about the canals. And uh, Captain Pearl Nye um, actually composed this, or he was a, a, on the uh, Ohio and Erie Canal. And um, what happened was in the old days, when the canals were first opened up in the mid 19th century, um, they were very, very uh, dependent on rain. And so the, some low areas around where the canal was being traced through, uh, the swampy areas and stuff were then basically uh, dug out and turned into portage lakes. And there's still a few of them around, around the old canal traces. And, um, but this song uh, basically uh, is, is uh, called we're going to pump out Lake Erie and uh, mainly because they were upset that they didn't have enough water <laughs> so that they couldn't travel on, on the uh, canal so this is we're going to pump out Lake Erie the season is dry old timer and water it won't run uphill so let's do our best to forget the rest and keep our levels full. We're going to pump out Lake Erie. We're going to begin next June. And when we get done, we tell by the sun that we whiskers on the moon. The borders may sometimes fail us, and often are much too low. And then for rain, we have to wait. For oh, Lord, and we cannot go. We're going to pump out the Erie. We're going to begin next June. And when we get done, we can tell by the sun that we just on the moon. Watch our gates and paddles, our tumblers and raceways too. They'll help us along with their merry song and we'll see that we come through. We're going to pump out the Geary, we're going to begin next June. And when we get done, you can tell by the sun of the whiskers on the moon. Now the ground is the water, we keep things afloat, and I never will put fields on my old canal boat, for I love the old towpath and anything afloat, so you cannot make a wagon of my grand old boat. We're going to pump out Lake Erie, and no, I have no idea what whiskers on the moon means. No idea. So, we need to talk a little bit about our next song, don't we? We do, because uh, this is one I specially requested, and uh, it's one of my very favorites that I've heard you sing. And I did not know until Tuesday that it's it didn't used to be one that you particularly liked. That's correct. Uh, there was a, a request of me learning this song many, many, many years ago. Uh, by Judy Rose of the uh, Wisconsin Public Radio, and she thought it was a really, really nice song, and I should do it. And this is back, you know, uh, early, early 90s, maybe. And actually, it wasn't even before that. It was in the late 80s. And and I, I read it, and uh, I listened to it, and it was a parlor song, and it was didn't really have a lot of what I would call immediate connection to the sailing life or anything like that. I'm going to ask real quick, what, what is a parlor song? A parlor song is a song that was popular uh, in the Civil War years and after that people would sing in their parlors. It's kind of a, a, a silly answer, but that's really what it was. Um, there was a, 
a, a large um, business of sheet music selling. And um, as a matter of fact, um, it was, uh, depending on how popular the song was, sheet music was fairly lucrative business back in the mid 19th century. Okay, so not quite so much now, but um, so uh, it just didn't uh, strike me until I saw underwater video of the Lady Elgin itself. Uh, now this song was written by Henry C. Work uh, in Chicago, and and he uh, basically um, wrote it in the aftermath, shortly after the, the vessel sank uh, in September eighth, eighteen sixty. I could go on at length about this particular story because we're dealing with um, a passenger vessel state-of-the-art passenger vessel. The captain, Jack Wilson, was a staunch abolitionist. He was also the first uh, captain to take uh, the steamer Illinois through the Sioux Locks in 1855 up in the Lake Superior. Uh, he was one of the, the most notable captains on the lakes. And uh, what uh, ensued was uh, the schooner Augusta was traveling loaded with pine down to South Chicago and they left Chicago, um, the, Lady Elgin left Chicago about, uh, I would say about 10, 30, 11 o'clock that night, and then encountered a big storm. And in this storm, tragedy struck where the bowsprit of the uh, uh, Augusta uh, went into the port side, uh, forward of the drive wheel, there was a side wheel vessel, forward of the drive wheel, and punctured it in the next wave she disengaged now the standard operating procedure for that is if there's a vessel in distress you stand by to render assistance and what happened in this specific instance was that um the augusta was stove in pretty good forward and the the sailors told augusta go ahead and make make for shore uh, make for south chicago which was in hindsight a big mistake because they felt on the uh, Lady Elgin that it was going to be just fine, uh, that we would just uh, go towards shore. But actually, she sank with over 300 uh, lives lost. And now, when I saw the underwater video of the wreck site, uh, Valerie Van Heest uh, was in charge of the survey. She asked me to sing this song. And I said, well, I'm writing this song about the Lady Elgin. And she said, oh, OK, that's fine. Um, and but I, I promised her if I didn't get the song written that I would uh, do the Lady Elgin song and I did. And when I saw the underwater video, I was very, very moved. And so I'll sing you uh, the song uh, Lost in Lady Elgin uh, with a few verses that I added uh, quite a few years after the event. Okay. And I could I could go on and on and on on this particular well, story. I'm going to I'm going to interrupt just for a second and tell our, our virtual visitors that if you are interested in a program about the Lady Elgin, uh, let us know in the chat or in the survey that we have available and we might be able to do something about that. Great, great. So this is uh, my version of Lost on the Lady Elgin. It goes like this. Up from the Boardman's cottage, forth from the mansion door. Sweeping across the valley and echoing along the shore. Caught by the morning breezes, born on the evening gale, comes the voice of morning, a sad and solemn wail. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. Staunch was the noble steamer, precious the freight she bore. Gaily she loosed her cables a few short hours before. Grandly she swept our harbor, joyfully rang her bell. Little thought we ere morning, twould toll so sad a knell. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. Numbered with those three hundred who failed to reach the shore. 
A thunderstorm at midnight, big seas began to roll. One hundred miles of water was the noble steamer's goal. But a fatal slash on her port side from a schooner bearing pine. An airy silence shrouded all the dying engines whined. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. Numbered with those three hundred who failed to reach the shore. And here's to Captain Wilson, may his soul forever rest. When his noble steamer plunged beneath the surging crest, leading songs and prayers for every woman, man, and child, he bravely faced the elements on that long night so wild. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more, numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. And here's to Edward Spencer, who lived along the shore. That night the waves came breaking in with cries above the roar. Sixteen times he plunged into the boiling surf to rest. Another soul to safety asking, did I do my best? Oh, hear the sound of children crying for parents gone. Children slept that evening, but orphans woke at dawn. Sisters for brothers weeping, husbands for missing wives. Such were the ties that severed by those 300 lives. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. Numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. Lost on the Lady Elgin, sleeping to wake no more. Numbered with those 300 who failed to reach the shore. So this is the Lost on Lady Elgin. Now I've got a couple visual aids that I'd like to show you. This is in our book, Lake Rhymes, that I did a whole uh, chapter on. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, yeah, Lost on Lady Elgin. This, is, this gives you an idea of what the Lady Elgin looked like, see? Right, like that, okay? And then this was the uh, London Illustrated London News article the following month, Let's see if I can get that. That was the Augusta there, you see? So that gives you an idea of what we were dealing with, you know. Um, so it's, a, it's a, an amazing song that really meant a lot and became, uh, the loss of that vessel became an international event. And it actually changed maritime history, or uh, uh, maritime laws. Because uh, before that, sailing vessels did not have to have the green and red running lights after dark. After that, they did. So now we're going to change uh, course quite a bit. And this is a, a song that comes from Lake Ontario. Uh, and it's called The Mules That Walk the Folksle Deck. Now, you might say, what the heck is he talking about? 1875. The sailors decided, the Great Lakes sailors decided they were not getting paid enough money. And so um, they wanted to do something about that, so they went on strike. Now, the ship owners said, fine, we will pay you more money. Now, in that little pause between your and more money uh, was the statement, we will pay a few of you more money. What they did was they, well, they cut down the size of the crew. And so there was not near as many people to do the work. And so what they would do is they would hire on these four-legged sailors, these mules to do the heavy, heavy lifting. And uh, there are current accounts of, at the time that those vessels were known as horse manure boats. And the sailors on them were known as horse manure sailors. And you know as well as I do, sailors never use the term manure. Deck and work two mules of fame. They sailed the lakes many years, the 
and bump for the man. The cabin boy was the captain of the and he was the captain crew. They fish for long and keel for high, but sailoring they knew. They weigh the anchor heads and set up and close the calling sail. Sometimes they prefer it, they preferred it, sometimes they would fail. Bones was long and lean and like this is what when he walked. Napoleon got near the size, but he kept his long ears hot. Cabin jar, we anchored them in the bow and set our course up the upper lake, small speed the wind around. As we went rolling up the lake into a northwest breeze, Napoleon still makes a part, both both was at his ease. And every time the mate would shout, Stand by to come about, they'd ship their tails to the weather rail, not ever looking down. And one day on a starboard tack, for to Lucy they moved. We all stood by upon the deck and topped the laundry room. To the locks, they decided they were better sails, but they like two rocks. The cabin boy who pulls and swore, but to no avail, a canary jumped up on the bank and twisted Napoleon's tail. The captain then came to the rail, shouting, What's this delay? The cabin boy in turn replied, These deals won't fall today. The maiden came up from below, a feedback in each end. Just post these sailors, leave my boys, it's supposed they understand. Dudes that walk folks so that they pull that whole day through. If the captain had allowed it, they'd have pulled us to the zoo. Dudes that walk the folks so that they would do yours of fame. They say the next man be here. They say our village may be here, Napoleon and Bolton names. Mules that walk the folks Let me just get a little spray over the side here. Thanks, Lee. I, I really love that song. And, uh, I just, I imagine having mules on the big freighters we see going by now. <laughs> yeah, well, what's interesting, I was doing some, we were doing a little bit, Michelle and I were doing a little bit of trying to get some visual uh, uh, representation of what was going on there. And I know I've got a picture somewhere, but I couldn't find it. But I was going through the canal, uh, the Panama Canal site, and all the engines that, that move the vessel along, they're called mules. <laughs> it's it's and, very interesting. So, so you learn something every day. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, uh, now though it'd be pretty hard to get life jackets for those mules. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's not. I'm not even sure. Back in the days, the life jackets were very good for humans, even. <laughs> so True. Cork only does so much. You know, after it gets. Um. I've got a few more songs if that's if that's all right. Can of I course. Well, okay. Um, the Scow Schooner John Bigler was built in 1858. And I have a uh, my apologies. Yeah, <laughs> in, in Detroit, in Detroit, and uh, she was um, bluff bowed. Now your typical schooner is is has a uh, cut water on it. Uh, so it's very, very, it plows through the water very, very nicely, whereas the, the scow schooners are bluff bowed and they kind of push the water in front of them. Now, they're really good in that image you see going through the, the locks. Um, they're very good for locks and canals and that type of thing. Uh, and secondary waterways, where they're very shallow. But when they got out in the big water, they were ponderously slow. As a matter of fact, 
Ivan Walton, who uh, did collect a version of this song, he interviewed a couple of guys who worked aboard the big one. And one of them said, in a big wind, she makes quite a commotion in very little speed. And another one said, she plowed the whole lake in front of her. <laughs> so, um, and you'll notice that in this particular song, uh, as it progresses, that they're, they kind of poke fun at themselves, pushing the fleet in front of them. But what is disconcerting on this song is the chorus. It goes like this. Watch her, catch her, jump on the juber jew, give her the sheet and let her slide, the boys will push her through. You ought to see us howling, the wind was blowing free on our passage down to Buffalo from Milwaukee. And we're not exactly sure what juber jew means. Um, there was a dance back in some of the nickel shows back in the uh, like minstrel show type programs that was a, a, a very popular uh, juba, juba Jew. So maybe that was what it was being referred to. But I know when I was young and that my father wanted me to do something, he would say, jump on that, will you? So perhaps what means is jump on the jib, will you? The jib being the, the boom that holds one of the forward sails. Um, or it could be if you don't watch your head, that boom comes around and hits you in the head and then you do a dance called the juba Jew. I don't know. But basically, that chorus describes the sailing craft turning in the wind and goes like this. Come on, my boys, and listen, a song I'll sing to you. It's all about the big learned of a jolly crew in Milwaukee last October. A chance to get a sight in a schooner called the Big Galer belonging to Detroit. It was on a Sunday morning about the hour of 10. The rubber Emmett towed us out into Lake Michigan. We sat so where she left us in the middle of the fleet. And the wind did from the south third. We had to give her a sheet. Oh, watch her, catch her, jump on a juber jew. Give her the sheet and let her slide. The boys will push her through. You ought to see in a howling. The wind was blowing free. On her passage down to Buffalo from Milwaukee. The wind that came ahead before we reached the Manitou's. Three dollars and a half a day just suited the big loose crew. From there into the beavers, we steered her full and by. We kept it to the wind, my boys, as close as she could lie. To Skilligali and Wabashanks, the entrance to the straits. We might have passed the big fleet if they hove to and wait. But we pushed them on before us, nice as you ever saw. Out into Lake Huron from the streets of Mackinac. Oh, watch her, catch her, jump on a juba jew. Give her the sheet and let her slide. The boys will push her through. You want to see the howling? The wind was blowing free. On her passage down to Buffalo from Milwaukee. We made the presque light and then we boomed away. The wind had been fair for the Isle of Thunder Bay. But when the wind had shifted, we had a stubborn attack. We said a good Look out for the light at Pono Parks. We made the light and kept inside of Michigan's North Shore. A booming for the river as we'd often done before. And ride a breast for drawn light or anchor we let go. The sweepstakes came alongside, took us all in tow. Watch her, catch her, jump on a juba jew. Give the sheep and let her slide, the boys will push her through. You ought to see in a howling, the wind was blowing free. On her passage down to Buffalo from Milwaukee. The sweepstakes took eight and tow, all us fore and aft. All this on the Lake St. Clair stuck us on the flats. She parted the hunter's tow line and trying to give relief. And stem and stern went big ruler into the maple leaf. The sweepstakes and she towed us outside the river light. Lake Erie, Port to Rome, the blustering winds to fight. The wind did from the south, there we paddled her own canoe. She's pointed toward the dummy and held bent for Buffalo. Watch her, catch her, jump on a juba jew. Give her the sheet and let her slide, the boys will push her through. You ought to see it is howling, the wind was blowing free. On our passage down to Buffalo from Milwaukee. We made the O and passed one point, the wind was blowing free. We howled along the Canada shore, perk over on our lee. What is it that is up at one on as we draw near? But like a blazing star shone the light of Buffalo Pier. And now we're safe to land that day in Buffalo Creek at last. Under rigs, elevator, the big loose she's made fast. And in some lager beer saloon, we'll let the bottle pass. Where we are jolly shipmates, 
we'll drink a social glass. Watch her, catch her, jump on a jubber jew. Give the sheep and let her slide, the boys will push her through. You ought to see in a howling, the wind was blowing free. On the passage down to Buffalo for Milwaukee. Oh, watch her, catch her, jump on a jubber jew. Give the sheep and let her slide, the boys will push her through. You ought to see in a howling, the wind was blowing free. On her passage down to Buffalo for Milwaukee. Big Wigs Crew. That's another song that uh, I, I saw actually a version of that in the uh, Plain Dealer, um, 1876. And uh, no, it was the 18, early 1880s. And uh, so. I thought I'd finish up with a song uh, that I wrote about the 1913 storm. And what really uh, brought home to me that particular storm was uh, in that year, uh, 2013, the tall ships were up on the Great Lakes. But the previous, and, and uh, all these beautiful vessels from some, some even from uh, abroad, coming up on the Great Lakes and the different ports and, and uh, I remember um, three years before, in 2010, uh, when they were in Chicago, that there was a vessel called the Bounty that um, she took out a little bit of a top mast on one of the uh, bridges. And so they, they had to repair it and that type of thing. But two years later, in October, uh, Hurricane Sandy, uh, she was lost. And there was some very, very, very uh, poignant video done by the Coast Guard of the rescue. Um, the captain was lost in the vessel and also uh, one of the decks, deckhands, which actually was a descendant of such a Christian of all, all things. Amazing. And, uh, but every uh, Coast Guard did an amazing job in rescuing everybody else. And all that summer, 2013, I didn't even think about it until I was thinking about that September, uh, the end, after the tall ships were all done. And um, I said, we had missed the bounty. And when I saw that underwater, uh, that, that video, uh, it was a topside video of her last moments, it just, the sinking feeling in my, myself was just terrible because I walked her deck and I knew some of the people that were on that vessel, uh, you know, sailed on her from time to time. And, uh, and then I thought of the 1913 storm where Hundreds of people lost their lives, and scores of vessels were were affected. And this song came out. So we shall always remember. We shall always remember when the storms rage o'er the lakes. The strength of heart and purpose that each sailor always takes. And those ashore and waiting for their loved ones fun return as they search the seething shoreline while at home the fires burn. Thank on Argus, then of Cleveland, Captain Gutch and his whole crew, Dr. James Carruthers, that was lost without a clue. The Hydra sank in Huron. She would never sail again. We shall always remember, always remember that great loss in ships and men. There was the lead field built in Scotland, lost off Superior's North Shore, and the big John A. McGee. Captain I and 22 more, Charles S. Price turned turtle, and Regina fought the storm. Both crews faced up together, tossed his flotsam on the way And the Isaacs got home cold from the port of Milwaukee through the towering waves of Huron. 
She sailed to eternity And Henry B. Smith, she went missing Off of Market, Michigan We shall always remember her Always remember that great cost in ships and men. There were sailors from the Wexford, washed up lifeless on the shore. Near Port Huron, the only proof then of her sinking, nothing more. Here he took its toll in Buffalo, light ship 82 at last. Goodbye, Mary. Boat her captain, ship is taking on fast. And there were many more ships confounded in that huge November gale. Some were ridden off his wrecks. While others again would say, in the strength of heart and purpose that a sailor always takes, we shall always remember, always remember that great storm that savaged shipping o'er the land. Do we have any questions? Well, I was going to say uh, first, thank you very much. That was a beautiful song. And I was just going to share one of the things that really caught my attention with this storm is how many of the boats that were total losses were actually brand new boats. They had yeah. launched that same year. So it wasn't like it was taking out a lot of these old no. vessels on their last legs. These were brand new state-of-the-art vessels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a horrendous. Well, they call it a white hurricane. You know, it was. Mm -hmm. you know, it's the same type of storm that took the Fitzgerald. You know, and and also took uh, Carl D. Bradley mm -hmm. and uh, the Daniel J. Morrell. You know, there it's it, the, these bodies of water are among the most dangerous on earth. No question. And um, we will uh, give everybody a few minutes to enter their questions into the chat if they have any questions or comments to share with Lee. And uh, I'm going to take a few minutes. Uh, first, too, I'm going to um, tell everyone if this is your first time hearing Lee perform, um, our little uh, program here, our little platform we use does not do him justice. Um, get the CDs or watch the YouTube videos or go to one of his upcoming shows because the uh, audio here honestly is not doing him justice. It will be a great show if you can see him live. And uh, while people have a chance to enter questions, I'm gonna go ahead and review our visitor center statuses for the Duluth and Sioux visitor centers. Uh, in Duluth, the center is open Thursday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, they're still doing their vessel and arrival departure announcements. There's a cell phone tour available outdoors. Uh, they have a virtual online tour of their visitor center, and they're operating an outdoor and online gift shop. Uh, currently, masks are required in uh, the Duluth Visitor Center. Uh, this is a, a situation we monitor every day. Um, it changes based on the transmission rate of COVID-19 in each county. Uh, currently at the uh, Sioux, our visitor center is open from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, the observation platform and park are open from 9 to 10 p.m. Our uh, vessel hotline is up and running. You see the number there. Um, we have um, our information sheets and exhibits are available online. Uh, Ranger Scott will be posting a link to where you can get to um, our online exhibits. Uh, currently in the, the Sioux Visitor Center, masks are only required for unvaccinated visitors. But as I mentioned, these statuses can change daily um, based on the transmission rates in our counties, which we are very closely monitoring. 
And uh, I'll put this up here so you can make note of the upcoming shows and the website where you can find more information and links to recordings and other um, Lee Murdoch related information. And I will uh, run through a couple of our questions and comments here. Uh, one of them that I was kind of curious about myself is, um, do you have any songs about the Eastland disaster or are you aware of any songs about the Eastland? Yeah, actually, um, Tom and Chris Castle many, many years ago wrote a song called the Eastland. Um, and I recorded it on my album Fertile Ground back in 1989. Um, and it's... Uh, done on a company and it's to a, a melody called Carolyn's Dream, I think, which is a, an old Irish melody. Uh, and and it, it talks about the politics and all that involved too. They did a be beautiful job in that song. And Betsy says, thanks for a lovely program and commented on how informative it was. Uh, Ron is asking, do you sing lake song renditions of other artists like Gordon Lightfoot? So do you do covers? Yes, I do cover a few other other artists, uh, and and uh, yes, I do that song. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, but um, and and it's it's, it's a, a magnificent work. There's no question about it. And I do it probably a little bit differently than what you're mostly mostly going to hear because I just like all my other songs. I got to explain them about them, and so I want to explain about that song to all the different permutations of of the Ed, Edmund Fitzgerald you know, it was named after and all that stuff. So. Um, and, uh, so, but I've also cover, uh, covered other people who've been working, uh, on telling good stories uh, about our Great Lakes history. Okay. And I'm gonna, um, just throw in my commentary that, uh, while you may be a crack, uh, performer and entertainer and singer, uh, underneath it all, I think you are an educator. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Paul Tipman is asking, um, about the Armistice Day storm, and um, I think maybe suggesting it as a good uh, program topic, and uh, I certainly uh, agree with that. And I did not know this, but Paul is sharing that it is the same storm system that took out the Tacoma Bridge. Oh, really? So that's I, a that's a pretty uh, long-reaching storm. Yeah, there was it, it was interesting. Uh, uh, I'm trying to uh, that's, I'm trying to think of the, the guy's name. Ed Begance, who was captain, uh, he was the, the commodore of the Pittsburgh Steamship Company. I, I interviewed him when he was about 95 years old, and he said um, two things. I asked him if he ever worked on schooners, and 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 he said I was on one vessel, the Our Sun, which actually sank in September of 1930, and it was the last uh, major uh, uh, loss of a schooner on, on the lakes. And, and, and I said, well, how come, how did you like it? And he said, I'm not a blank, blank rope puller. Uh, <laughs> you can, you can fill in the blanks is what he was right. saying. Um, and, but he also, he also on his first uh, captain, he was captain during that armistice day storm. His vessel was off of Gray's Reef Light. And the only thing that saved his aft end was the backwash off the light in that storm. Um, it was a, uh, it was a uh, very interesting when you get those little tidbits of that kind of the mosaic puts together the whole picture of what was going on. So. And I think I have run through all of our questions. Well, great. Well, thank and you so I much. For, cannot for thank you enough for agreeing to, to do this for us. It was a lot of fun and, and hopefully everybody uh, you will, you learn something or, uh, you, we'll, we'll see you down the coast and and, uh, and uh, stay safe. And I always try and say uh, these words at the end of my program. Uh, uh, I'd like to wish each and every one of you folks good health. Be kind to your neighbor. May it always be a fair wind that fills your sails. Until next time. It's a very nice sentiment, and thank you. And again, I urge everyone who watched, check out the CDs. Uh, if you can get to a live performance, definitely do that because our audio does not do justice to these performances. And uh, real quickly, for those who are still with us, our next program is a grand experiment, the rise of McDougall's whalebacks. That will be on, um, do I have the date there? 
I don't have the date. There's two weeks from today. Uh, Captain McDougall's unique whaleback freighters were curiosities to most who saw them. Um, travel across the Great Lakes. Join Ranger Scott as he describes how they were created from McDougall's sailing experience and how they challenged and lost out to traditional Great Lakes ship designs. And uh, again, uh, our survey, please fill that out and let us know uh, how you uh, enjoyed the program, suggest future programs, and uh, we really appreciate that feedback. It helps us plan again. Uh, up on the screen, you can see all the various links, ways to contact us, the link to our YouTube page where this recording will be posted later. And also uh, an invitation, please again, fill out that survey. And thank you for joining us and everyone, please stay safe and have a great uh, next two weeks till we see you again in the Virtual Visitor Center. Thank you.